E já estamos de regresso. Solar pack, last panel. The last panel of this edition of the summit. Football is competing with other entertainment industries. How can they react in face of that competition? What are the current trends? Is there a gap comparing with other sectors to answer this? And other questions. For this afternoon, we have entrepreneur Sermin Monteiro from uh, the Confederation of Portugal, Luis Montes, Musica no Coração, Tiago Correia, Marketing Director at FC Porto, and Sara Lorosa, she's the head of corporate strategy of the A. Here they are, so that we can have a debate that will be quite successful. Welcome. Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to TFS. Hope you are enjoying. Uh, I would like to thank my colleagues for being here, who came to debate about the challenges of the football industry as a part of the industry of entertainment. Hope you like it. I would start with you, Armindo, as the uh, president of CIP, someone who is fully aware of the reality of companies in Portugal. What are the challenges as a part of this uh, ecosystem? Thank you, Sara. Hello, Luis. Hello, Tiago. This initiative answers this a bit, you know. The president of Liga, Pedro Proença, in the previous time in office, had the idea of bringing Liga for the Entrepreneurial Confederation of Portugal, CIP. What would be a bit weird, right? And it's not. One of the ways to take this seriously is to end this prejudice that everything that has to do with entertainment is as if it was not uh, uh, formal or serious for those who live in the Algarve, uh, and those who live there don't work there. So it seems to be something that makes no sense. Difficulties, the typical difficulties of the entrepreneurial sector in Portugal, lack of scale, an amazing or, or, or uh, uh, an incredible tax burden, but it is also something that has to do with a lot of entrepreneur spirit. We have all have the spirit, but then we lack the matter, the subject. In terms of the entertainment industry, I were there to identify three or four different points that seem to be important to change. The fact that uh, the football is a uh, factory of emotions, but I would say that we need to pay for things. And we must not forget that when we talk about emotions, when we talk about passion, we must not forget that we still have a bit uh, our ROI, all those economic jargon that those foreign companies know about. And it's no different because of being in this industry. There are things to pay, simply put. So we need to have a huge uh, deal of professionalism. Professionalism, allow me to say, amateur doesn't mean careless. But being professional means to be at the right job. Peter, principal. You can be very competent in a certain field, but then in another one is not. When I'm talking about professionalism, that's what I mean. Professionalism in terms of managers, entrepreneurs. Luis Montes is not different because he's in this sector. No, same concerns. To be professional, needs to be the same. At FC Porto, Tiago, same thing. 
doesn't have to be different. So let me add just one last part that has to do with internationalization and this idea of digital economy that seems to be an intellectual abstraction, but it is not. We should take advantage of the digital transition because this is a way to get to the world. Luis Montes does those brilliant shows, not just to the national audience. He counts on everyone. I read recently that 180 nationalities came to a certain festival. If we are not using these tools, it won't work. So in a nutshell, internationalization, digital transition, being professional, to have this capacity also Football is the last point of resisting the temptation of managing the public assets. I'm not talking about top clubs, but the others who are from the interland where the mayor does not resist to the temptation of wanting to manage everything. So we need to be very careful about this because with laws and rules of the economy, we need to be professional, we need to be passionate, and we need to be professional. Luis, taking into account your experience uh, in entertainment, but everything that you show in terms of the football industry, in terms of interest, what are the main challenges? In terms of the entertainment industry, what do we need to work on to be a more competitive player? Good afternoon. Thank you for having me. I really love football, music also, music and football. Uh, that's why, that's what moves me, okay? I have the best business in the world where my consumer pays and then claps. I really love football, and I have my activity of music and festivals, and I have been thinking about uh, subjects that could be improved. My business is to sell tickets. Tiago's president, when I did Frank Sinatra a few years ago in the former stadium of Vantage, said something that uh, I kept with me, that the difference between a company and a football club is that companies need to have profits and clubs need to have victories, wins. Of course, if they have a solid economy, they will have better players and so on and so forth. And so tickets, which is what I work on, tickets is my bank, OK? I start selling Christmas packs for festivals of July and August. If I, in terms of football, if I want to uh, give my son a ticket for a certain game, I can't because they are not for sale. What are we waiting for? The schedule is already defined. Why are not tickets selling? It would be nice for clubs to start the championship with that revenue because big matches would enter soon. That's one of the things. Then there are two or three things. Uh, if, we go, if we go to concerts, it has to do, people say food and beverage, OK? The amount of food that they sell outside of the stadium, clubs are not getting anything from it. So it's important to create an area outside of the stadium so that there was some revenue. Because a lot of beer is sold, a lot of food. We could bring brands.
FC Porto is selling Superbog but outside their sagas there, so it's uh, In my festivals, I open, I open the door so, uh, the soon as possible so that they can go and uh, make some consumption, even week pants, so they can go there and drink beer and eat. The other thing is merchandising. At my home, my, my, my kids uh, are uh, fans of different clubs and they have a lot of shirts. It's the third match this year, and the shirt is not for sale yet. Merchandising, it's a great revenue. It's passion. It's emotion. You just order it. You just buy it. This is some revenue that clubs should pay attention to. Last year, I went to see Harry Styles at the arena at New York, and I was there with the owner of the arena. And that, well, you already sold six six thousand six thousand dollars in merchandising. I gave me I gave him the arena for free because what I get in merchandising, food and beverages, it's more than enough. You know what we are selling the most? Harry Styles nail polish. That's the top selling item. So the images of players to sell merchandising. The idol uh, dressing in a certain way or maybe the watch or I don't know, you name it. Merchandising is something that is quite important. And then sponsoring. Tiago worked with me at Superbox, Super Rock, 30 years working with the brands. So brands associating, it's a proper way of communicating and I don't get it. As you know, I'm a, I'm a shareholder of Altis Serena. I don't get it. Why stadiums don't have a brand naming, which is a source of income? I have a brand at the arena in Lisbon, or else I couldn't do it. Naming sponsors for stadiums, and then, uh, you know, with private areas in concerts to, or in private areas to find some uh, treats for sponsors. The clients of a certain brand might take pictures with the players, something that's different because people I get crazy because uh, what people ask me is for uh, the, the kids to take pictures with the artist. Football is the same thing. It's our artists, our stars, to work on that closing of the brands with football. Uh, thank you, Luis. Tiago. Moving forward towards challenges of the football industry, and you spoke about food and beverages, low alcohol, which is a constraint in terms of the industry, and other things such as sponsorship, uh, that uh, what are those challenges and what does they have to do to improve? Thank you for having me. Pleasure to be here. Mind and Luis, uh, we have so many uh, stories together. I think that you need to understand a bit this industry uh, of uh, music. I don't agree with that. I think that football does not compete with music. If you go into a stadium, you have music inside, music outside, music for the anthem, music for the goals. Consumers look at their competition or for things mm -hmm. that are in competition. It has nothing to do with the sectors in the industry. It has to do with time. Personally, the biggest competitor of football is a proper restaurant, when instead of watching the Champions League final, I prefer to have dinner with my family. The, the greatest challenge that we have, and I think that most sectors in entertainment, is how can we anticipate 
the 24 hours of those who consume whatever. So trying to bust a myth of these issues that uh, revenues are at the match. Uh, we have, uh, if we were able to go to the finals of all competitions that we would play, maybe we'd have 62, 63 matches, so uh, 18 percent. So uh, we must know how are we able to anticipate what will be the consumption it's now happening in London, a match of YouTubers, 60,000 people at the stadium. Before we started, a million and a half people. So that's the time of people, uh, 10 seconds, right? All of that is actually changing. I think that the greatest challenge is the ability that we have of being able to anticipate and to be relevant throughout the 24 hours of the day for all of you, either because you're buying something or because you are following or because you are defending us on WhatsApp or they're buying a ticket or their advice is to go to the store because you love something. Um, this is uh, a huge challenge. The second challenge is a challenge that I come from Superbok, just like Luis said. I've been at FC Porto for 12 years, uh, corporate brand, so we have to do with the brand and less connected to business. And uh, FC Porto will turn 130 years of existence, and the marketing is centralized uh, for 13 years. In the other 117 years, there was marketing, there was a logo, a shirt, an event, so everything was completely separate. We might have events where the message is one and the others, it was a different one. So from the point of view of building the brand, we are recent, not as a brand, but with the logic of organization and strategic planning of what is intended. So what I feel that not just Porto and most clubs and entities especially in Portugal or abroad, it's not as evolved because, uh, or as much as we think, the issue of uh, governance and the way that sporting entities are organized. Many times I kid around saying that we are a club, we were a club, there was a huge pressure for us to become a company. Around 10 years ago, there was, it was companies need to be companies and they need to be managed as companies, this pressure. But I think that now we are a brand. And as a brand, we might be competing against Superbox Super Rock or a restaurant. I think in football, a birthday party of our best friend. I think that the issue of internal governance in clubs and to understand and realize what we'll have. If we're a brand, we need to be closer to what the brands do. With everything that's trade marketing, we must continue to have a posture of the game as it is. And these are match days. We should have a team for match day, a team for outside of the match day, people who are thinking about those who are watching the game at home, those who think about uh, how to take advantage uh, on the copyrights uh, of the image of players. So this will allow. Uh, to be much more agile, much swifter, and to understand the 165 days of the year or the 60 days of the year of the match. I think that these are the huge challenges from a macro perspective. Issues of being able to uh, bring merchandising or to have one more typology. Obviously, this is important. This is tactical. This is something that the everyday life brings about but uh, when we can be disruptive in terms of the models we have today is the only way for us to do something that can be transformative. Clubs such as FC Porto, as Benfica, Sporting, as Braga, and, and others, uh, the first league, they have this obligation of somewhat, uh, you know, penetrating the market, which is what we will try to do and we have been trying to do. We need to do it together with music, with some industries that have some um, similarities in some of the touch points that we have. 
I see music not as a competitor, but as a source of inspiration, like many other sectors that touch the everyday life. When I go to a restaurant, usually I learn more or I can learn more because I'm looking at food and beverage or the way that the service is made and going to Superhawk, Superhawk, because I'm learning the experience on how we enter six hours before the concert and they need to be entertained. So I think that that learning comes from sectors and not in this logic of competition. We want people to have fun and then we need to be uh, capable of having a product, having a brand that is important to them and that makes them want to be with us. Thank you, Tiago. Well, as a marketeer of Porto, uh, as a marketing strategy, with this need of having this increase in revenue, tickets, what do you learn with entertainment? And what kind of revenue do you think that clubs should work on in Portugal to be able to reach this goal? Clubs have been increasing operational revenues throughout the years, right? Invoicing in most uh, areas. So this year, we are uh, increasing in the number of shirts, the number of annual seats in the occupation in terms of hospitality with some price increases in the decrease of consumption. I think that we need to, in, a, in accordance with what I said, We need to have the ambition of not being happy because uh, we are selling more shirts. I think that this uh, should be a, a positive, sure, but the issue is how do we change this paradigm of the industry feeling that we can do more, that the experience that we have, not just Porto, but it's not an experience that is at the level of something that we go into the football stadium. So if we have factors, just like you said, that are emotional, we need to bring this emotion for the 365 days. Those who go in the store of port on retail, it's not going in Zara, we are going in the area of port. So there is a gap that needs to be explored. So. So we need to rethink the governance and industry that sometimes it's turned within towards the operation, many problems of regulations. Because we have regulations of something, we are the only sector where it is not possible to have a beer, but we almost have more revenues in the friend zone, which is our friend zone. So the revenues from the friend zone maybe at the end of the season will be higher than the revenues within the stadium in terms of food and beverage. So people drink their beers. Uh, in the last game, usually we send some messages to each other. We open the doors when an hour and a half or one and a half hours before or two hours before. Uh, we send messages to each other. We spoke about the games. It's a full house. Fortunately, we have the biggest occupation rates. A lot of fans are coming, so two hours before. So unlike other years, people came in a lot later because they stay in the friend zone, mingling, drinking beer. Yesterday, I heard some players it should be fundamental when they start feeling the warmth of the audience, uh, see a full stadium, and they not, and they do not. The stadium is almost empty. The warm-up, which should be the time that should be a, a very important and rich, uh, because in reality, uh, situations are a bit confusing. We don't have a centralized league, one of the few countries where the alcohol consumption is not possible. There are many models in Europe 
we are uh, either it, it works or it doesn't. In the Netherlands, you can, and when it's the classics, it doesn't. So we are a bit blind in terms of the yes or no. And this uh, regulatory obligation uh, from the point of view of this part, so we have a set of limitations that are rules of the sector, but uh, they do create some obstacles, some constraints, and we would love to be able to be a more, um, more faster. Let me come back to you because you discussed some of the issues that the industry of football might have to learn from entertainment. Well, being in the industry of entertainment, uh, what do you think we could learn with football? Football and music, I'm sure, sooner or later will go together because it's becoming harder and harder to uh, hold events outdoors. You cannot imagine the process of licensing the Sudwest Festival. It's files, authorities, uh, civil protection, DG Health, RCNF, uh, everyone has something to say. It's nightmarish. And it just so happens that football stadiums are already licensed. Thank God. They have bathrooms. So these are great infrastructures to have shows in the summer. It coincides with the end of the championship. Until it starts, we have one month and uh, something to be able to build and to give profitability to stadiums where the stadiums might uh, give something back to uh, members and sponsors. And the promoter has a place that it's already licensed with a set of infrastructures. And if we have this beforehand, there is a problem of the grass, which is a problem of gloves. There needs to be time to replace the grass if necessary. The city of Coimbra is uh, promoting, uh, trying for us uh, that, that we uh, uh, use their stadium. In Portugal, it will be a bit hard with noise, which is something that already happens in developed countries, that after midnight, we cannot, uh, we cannot uh, uh, emit any sounds or noise. So I believe that this is a source of income for clubs, renting the stadium for music shows and others. Let me also, I forgot to uh, tell you something, which is um, because these are shows of uh, emotions, I always make this connection, which is Sudwest, the festival itself, I always have Brazilian artists because there is a huge community of Brazilians in Portugal, which are communities and are nice. Uh, the music is nice. So, and I miss having players uh, from Angola, for example, where I was born. Clubs uh, don't have Mantorres, for example. I remember going to Cabinda, and uh, the, the boy knew everything about Benfica because of Mantorres. And uh, we don't have any in this time, so it's just foreigners from Puerto Rico, from Colombia, from here, from there. But from Angola and Mozambique, Brazil, we have a few. It's making an effort when they would select artists for the match. for the broadcast of the matches for those countries. If there is no player from that part, why would I see it? We see Saudi Arabia because of Ronaldo, or else I wouldn't. So it's important to have people from the Palop. So please, don't forget about this. Minute and a half, but uh, feel free to answer. 
please answer this question, which is quite important. We have a lot of ambitions, but we are living in a framework where there are context costs that are very specific. This industry has something that it's worsened in terms of entertainment. This industry has insurance on the athletes that occupy an, a, a huge value in terms of costs and all the tax frameworks such as that for careers as such as this one make it they have a huge weight and increase competitivity in terms of what is international involvement. So I would ask for your opinion about how can this limit the fulfillment of all these goals. Of course it does, Sara. And it's possible to say this in many ways. There is an easy way to do it. The Portuguese state charges a lot and it provide and it doesn't provide enough. We have taxes of rich for a country that is poor. The economy is poor, but our rates are at the level of Europe. Tax uh, on, ta on companies, entertainment or others, culture or any other area are nominal rates of uh, uh, taxes considering the local tax. We talk about competitivity of our economy and this does not make us competitive at all. In this specific area where we need to have talent, but especially to attract talent, because we are talking on a global scale, good players to come to Portugal, one of the factors that they assess is the cost that they will have to pay. Because what's important, paying a footballer or a, any professional of any area, is not the value of the contract, is what they get paid, the net value. And we have high rates of uh, private tax, and we are not competitive in these areas. The confederation that I preside will present this week so that it might be included in the budget of the state preparing for 2024, presenting a set of measures that are specific so that we are an economy that's more competitive. We have proof that we have no handicap. We are not worse than any country, but the state needs to be a partner and not asphyxiate the economy with the taxes that they charge. Thank you, Armindo. We came to an end, so let me thank you all. I think that there are ideas and messages quite important in terms of the industry of entertainment. Thank you for having us and for providing us with this opportunity. Thank you all for being with us. With this panel, when we look at football from the uh, point of view of this part, we uh, hereby close the activities of Arena Stage and Thinking Football Summit. Thank you on behalf of Liga Portugal for being with us. Uh, stay with us, thinking about uh, thinking about football. Thank you. <laughs>